That's right, Millie. We didn't go to Harvest Crusade 2024. We watched it for, for the, the first, first time. time ever. We were home and we were watching and it was awesome, Millie. It's so interesting because we've been to Harvest Crusade, like we went to Harvest Crusade 2023. The video is here on our channel if you want to see that. But we've been going to Harvest Crusade for a long time, Millie. We used to do interviews for a Christian TV network in Spanish. And we would go and interview bands. And I think we even talked to like Greg Laurie, Skillex, some of the but bands the, that were playing back then. The first time I went with you, I was pregnant. With who? With, with Joseph? The first one, oh, Joseph. Wow. I'm yeah. talking about 13, 14, 15 years ago. 15 years ago, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Harvest Crusade 2024 was awesome. Is this still a good way to evangelize, Millie? What do you think about that? After 35 years of doing this type of event to invite people to follow Christ, why do you think it still? Um, why do you think it still works? Absolutely, Vito. Um, it's not the same to invite a friend to come and enjoy the concert then invite him to church mm. so you're saying this is like this church. is an amazing opportunity yeah i think there were like massive it's a massive church there. event yes yeah. yes yes okay. i think there was so many churches there and they invite their friends mm -hmm. so that's why so many i think that's why so many people comes to the at the end you know they're calling them to come and repent and accept jesus christ mm -hmm. as their lord and savior and I remember I went some time, I wanna I tried to remember with who I went, but I asked my friend, You wanna come? You wanna go? You know, so when you invite your friends, you walk with them mm. to the platform, you know, in the grass area. Mm -hmm. And, and that's you did? why you went to the I, grass? I did, but I just don't remember with who. Oh, somebody whose life was change forever <laughs> I hope so <laughs> I hope so yeah uh, this is beautiful Millie we I mean we did this video already but in Spanish but we wanted to do one in English because we want to connect a little bit with the with the people that go to these kind of events Millie but we as Latinos mm. I think it's so awesome to see so many people from like different backgrounds and ethnicities and a lot of Latinos going to this type of event, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. for us, I think it's awesome to see that mm. with the years, you know, living here in Orange County, California, where this event happened at Angel Stadium, um, that there's more Latinos going yeah. to events like this, right? It is beautiful, Beto, to see how it's like heaven on earth. I feel mm. like when one day we're going to be in heaven mm -hmm. and it's all kind of race and colors and flavors <laughs> the only so question wonderful. i have is when we are in heaven millie is it chris domling who's gonna be leading worship i or hope so or hope phil so. wickham maybe who both? do you think both are gonna there's be gotta there be with one us. millie only pick one <laughs> so hard Beto. well i think i will choose phil wickham because he's more like our generation mm, yeah it's more like but, our age but, but Chris Tomlin. Chris like, Tomlin you know. sings Holy Forever. Yes. <laughs> and it's so good. He's so cute. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. I think, Millie, what some people are questioning is like, is this effective in 2024 and beyond? Because to me, I think for our generation, Millie, this is almost like the classic presentation of the gospel. And what's interesting, Millie, and even Greg Laurie talked about it. You know, he's like, not many preachers are talking about this anymore. Mm. The topic of hell. Okay. And I think to introduce the gospel, you need to introduce the reality that there is a place called hell. You know, whether that's, uh, you know, a real place or not, or like any, any way you want to take it. Um, the Bible mentions it. Jesus mentions it. And it seems like Jesus mentions it quite a few times hmm. right so if you're a follower of jesus you you gotta answer at least the question of like okay what is this place and uh what does jesus offer me right what kind of life away from maybe that destination so i love that greg Laurie is like 
I, I gotta talk about it. You know, mm. I'm, I'm gonna make no apologies. And he even said, you know, he doesn't see any more um, preachers preaching about this, you know. And I think that's the idea of maybe like the prosperity gospel. Mm. Well, come to Jesus and you're going to be a millionaire or come to Jesus and things are going to be good. And Jesus never offered that to anyone, you know, even yeah. it was all the opposite. Jesus said, you know, come follow me. People are going to hate you. <laughs> I came to bring division. You know, if, mm. if you're with me, some people are not going to like you, you know. So I think in that sense, you know, I applaud Greg Laurie because he's still doing, he's keeping it simple. You know, he's saying the gospel is actually Jesus coming down to earth, sharing the good news that he forgives our sins mm -hmm. and that sin is real, that sin affects people, that sin ultimately leads to to hell mm -hmm. and that in Jesus we can have a new life mm -hmm. right so I think it's super simple but uh, I, I agree with Greg Lord you know I think nowadays this type of message maybe people come to you know they clash a little bit with it because of the way society is now but I think the the effectiveness of the message is the same really because we saw it at the end of this event people are rushing down to the field Mm. to give their lives to Christ, mm -hmm. you know? So I think the powerful, you know, even Paul said it, you know, I don't, uh, I don't repent about the gospel because it's the power of God mm -hmm. for the Jew and the Gentile. So I think that's what Greg Laurie is doing. You know, it's like, this is the gospel. I'm presenting it to you guys. And they were super open, you know, when his wife came on stage, uh, they talked a little bit about the struggle of losing a son, mm. um, When they moved the first time, the very first time they started doing it at Angel Stadium, mm -hmm. uh, that's when their one of their two sons died. Um, so going through those struggles, going through, you know, when they were growing up in high school, she said, you know, Kate Laurie said she was doing drugs and like almost like sex drugs and rock and roll. And for her to have grown up in a Christian household, and do these type of things and come to know Jesus, right? And Greg Laurie being almost like the opposite, not growing up in a Christian household. His mom, like having remarried like six times and uh, having a really tough upbringing, but coming to Jesus and then they meeting and coming together and then being part of this like Jesus revolution, right? Wow. Even at, in some part of the, of the event, mm -hmm. they show a clip of the Jesus revolution movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, to mention that Jesus is at the door of your heart and he's knocking, right? So almost like saying, if you see Jesus, if you see somebody like Jonathan Rumi, because they actually had uh, Jonathan Rumi come to their house mm -hmm. and visiting. So they felt like, wow, Jesus is coming to our house. And just to say, Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. Will you open that door and let him, let him come in? Mm. You know, so at the end of this message, he's like, come to the field, almost like in that, um, making a declaration of faith that you need to stand up. You need to walk. You need to, uh, pro almost like proclaim among the people or, or be a witness to the people that are around you that you want to decide to follow Jesus, mm. you know? So to make that commitment, almost like evident by having you walk down from the stadium and into the field. I mm. think that to me, that's, that's like the classical, presentation of the gospel like come to the altar like take mm. a step and show it right i think that's beautiful that that's still happening and that it's happening in this huge setting really like forty five thousand people that's the capacity of angel stadium and, and people came to the and he was mentioning that uh -huh. a lot of people were outside yes because you know that was full what a celebration but though at the end you know phil we can was um, performing and that's the part what I enjoyed the most mm -hmm. you know before I remember the first the, when we went 15 years ago it was like a lot of bands like rock bands mm -hmm. more like a concert concert yes. but now to see that it's a worship music mm. so delicious you yeah. know because I feel like it's like church and steroids mm-hmm Yeah, and I think that's, you know, like the song says, this is how I fight my battles, mm. right? So to say and almost declare it to the world, mm. here we are, 45,000 people in this stadium, and I don't know how many were Christians, right? But I'm assuming a lot because they're bringing their friends, right? 
And a lot of these people are already maybe members of either Harvest Church or some other local church. And they know that this event is evangelistic. So it's a great tool mm -hmm. to invite people. But because it's also a worship um, event, you want to come and you want to enjoy like listening to Phil Wickham or listening to Chris Tomlin lead you in worship to, mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. And at the same time for people to witness that and think, wow, th this is intense. You know, I wonder if people when they're there and they're, um, maybe questioning in their heart, is there a God? But they're there for a reason, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. maybe they're trusted friends that, okay, they wouldn't bring me to something that would hurt me, mm -hmm. right? So for them to be in this position and see people raising their hands and then have the message from Greg Glory and be challenged yeah. by it and challenged by yeah. Jesus, really. Yeah. Jesus knocking at the door of your heart and saying, will you open? And then seeing people... Go down, Millie, go down the aisle or the aisles mm -hmm. and go into the field and say, well, I want to respond to that. And mm -hmm. I want to, you know, if Jesus is real, I want to say yes to that and see what he can do in yeah. my life. Yeah. Right. And I also love that Greg Laurie. I, I love Greg Laurie, Millie, because he's like, this is this is a classical presentation of the gospel. And I'm gonna, not going to make any apologies for it. Right. Wow. Yes. Because he mentioned that he people, have no fear. He has no fear. <laughs> no like fear. I've been doing this for 35 years yes. and God is still the same yesterday, today and forever. Like it or no. And that's his ministry, Beto. Yeah. God called him to do this. Mm -hmm. He did it before, you know, just different. You remember the, the, we said that at the movie, the, the word in like, uh, uh, he was like canopies. a pastor of canopies and they were doing events like this. If you notice, Beto, it's like l a lot of youth. Look, mm -hmm. it was like, uh, uh, you don't see old people. It's a lot of youth mm -hmm. right there worshiping God. Uh, it's so hopeful, Beto. I enjoy it so much, so much. You know, people come to Jesus with a pure heart, raising their hands like, what a beautiful scenario. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's so wonderful. The two Latinas <laughs> <laughs> praising God, hugging yeah. each other. You they, know, must be, like, they must be uh, twins because they look so alike. <laughs> the uh, sisters. <laughs> yes. It was so beautiful, Millie. And I love also that Greg Laurie said, you know, people come to me and say, there's no sinner's prayer in the Bible. And he's mm -hmm. like, yes, there is. It's in Luke. And he shares a story when Jesus, it's actually a story Jesus told, where he said there was a, a tax collector and there was a, a Pharisee, mm. right? And the prayer of the Pharisee was like, thank you, Lord, for not making me like them. Thank you that I'm not a sinner. Thank you that I give my tithe and I give me. my offering. You bless me. But then the, the uh, tax collector is like, I'm so sorry, God, you know, and he was like beating his chest. I'm so sorry, God, like, please forgive me and, you know, take me into your, into your glory or something mm. like that. Right. Uh, and that's the sinner's prayer. That's the prayer of a repent, a repentant heart. And he's like, yes, there is a sinner's prayer. And he did that at the end, really, where he invited all the people once they're there in the field. He said, okay, we're going to do this prayer together. And he invited the whole stadium to say, how about we do it together in unison? And we say the sinner's prayer in support of the people that are giving their lives to Jesus right here. Even us right? from the couch. Yeah, we were at the couch <laughs> and we were watching live. So it was so cool because I bet you, Millie, if we got up on the roof of our house, we could have seen maybe the fireworks. Yes. Right? Yeah. And that was we're also that epic part. for the people that maybe are not from this area, Millie. Um, Angel Stadium is super close to Disneyland. It's maybe like five minute five minutes away, five minute drive. It's in Anaheim also. And at the end of the celebration, they had Phil Wick and come give like a full on um, concert with worship music and then fireworks show. Mm -hmm. It was so epic because what a beautiful celebration, Millie. Really. The Bible Gosh, says, and I miss it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We will watch online. It was awesome. But uh, even Greg Laurie said this, right? That the Bible says that there is a party in heaven whenever one person mm. repents and comes to Jesus, mm. right? So to have that almost like that celebration here to say, let's have fireworks, let's have music, let's dance, let's rejoice, right? And it's right across from Disneyland, which is the happiest place on earth. Millie, I dare to say yesterday Disneyland was not the happiest place on earth. 
that Angel Stadium was the happiest place on earth mm. because people were giving their lives to Jesus. Music, party was going on. Phil Wickham was amazing. Um, fireworks show. What else do you want? A brand new life, a turnaround, a repentant heart who's found forgiveness. So much hope. Peter. Nothing more beautiful so than that. So much hope. Yes. Yes. It was wonderful. So what are your final comments, Millie, about this This event with Greg Laurie, oh. maybe something that moved you. <laughs> you know how we say that this guy have no fear? Uh -huh. Actually, he, he was mentioning Donald Trump. Yes. You know, what happened with the shooting, you know, and we're praying for President Trump. And I love that. And he mentioned, we will, if that, you know, happened to Biden, we will pray for him too, because we are here as a Christians to pray for each other. You know, mm -hmm. we need to love our neighbor. We need to love our enemy. Uh, you know, our business is pray for people. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that. I love that. And when he mentioned Donald Trump, everybody, ah. it's like, yes, we're Orange County. And, you know, Christians, uh, we support Trump because he's more close with our beliefs. Right. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, he was not afraid to mention that. So, yeah, that was powerful, Millie. Um, also, another good thing, Millie, that I think uh, I got from, from this whole evangelistic event is that when Kate, his wife, came and she shared kind of like her story, right? Like we said, like growing up and sex, drugs and rock and roll, that's, that type of stuff. Mm. That, that was happening then and it's still kind of happening now. So almost to say, you mm -hmm. know, if God is the same yesterday, today and forever, and if the problems we're facing, they're not really new, mm. right? People have always throughout the ages um, been rebels before God, before the Lord or rebelled against God and going our own ways mm. and, you know, do the things that we do because we think it's what's best for us just because we like it. And that's why we need repentance. That's that's what repentance means. It's, it means a turnaround and do a 180. If you're going in one direction and say, you know, I'm going to go the opposite way and follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I think that was beautiful, Millie, because it gives me so much hope mm -hmm. to know that almost like the same things that people were struggling uh, mm -hmm. back back in the days, you know, with, when Greg and his wife were young is the same needs that people have nowadays, Millie. Yes. Right? Maybe now there's more Latinos, like we were saying. Maybe now there's more Asian and more like uh, different uh, ethnic backgrounds. But we have the same needs. Mm -hmm. We have the same needs for friendship, for forgiveness of our sins, the same needs for a relationship with God. So those will be <laughs> the same throughout the eras, Millie. So I think that's why evangelism like this is still effective because it's still yes. focused on the hope of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We have a neighbor that he accepted Jesus Christ in one of that events. Yes, and he's, <laughs> he has all the stickers, right? Yes. All the harvest stickers. How long time ago? Like 20-something, 30-something? I don't know, but yeah, yeah long, long ago. Time, right? Yeah, it's been going on for 35 years. So, so yeah, in one of those, I don't know which one. So, yeah, Millie, that was beautiful. My friends, thank you so much for watching this video. We really love to follow things like this. You know, when, when people are mm. um, evangelizing or are talking about mm -hmm, Christ, mm -hmm. we love to talk about it. In this channel, we love to talk about yeah. uh, Christian movies, The Chosen sometimes, right? The TV show about Jesus. We love to talk about the Bible. We have um, episodes where we have interviews with people who are scholars, politicians, people who follow sometimes Christ or sometimes are just interested in the topic of, of God mm -hmm. and they have a relevant voice, you know, so maybe not necessarily followers of Jesus, but they have a say, right? They're scholars who, who at least understand the Bible maybe sometimes better than we do. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are sometimes, sometimes the, some of the interviews that we have on the channel. So we invite you, if you like more content like this, to follow the channel, you know, maybe share the episode with somebody that mm. would enjoy watching with us and listening to us. And, and if uh, you had the opportunity to to go to this concert, please leave us a comment. Yeah. And let us know how was your experience. Yeah. How was your experience? That would be awesome, Millie. Mm -hmm. So we'll see you guys on the next one.